Hi guys and welcome back. And today I thought I'd show you how I installed the micro LEDs into the Pershing tanks. Previously on Heladonia. And I can't stress strongly enough, this is not a tutorial. This is just me showing you how I blundered my way through to get some lights working. So for a 170 second scale model, I tried to find the smallest LEDs I could. So these are 0.5 millimeter. I uh, got them from China. They took about four weeks to get here. And there were 20 in the pack for a very cheap, about $12 Australian. So that's not even real money anywhere else in the world. And of the 20 that were in the pack, 17 worked. So I'm not sure if that's a good ratio or not, but uh, that's what happened. As you can see, they come in a range of sizes. So I had the smallest ones, the 0402s. And I think the next size up might be more suitable for the 135th scale, which is what I want to try further down the track. So that's an actual picture I took with them in relation to the end of a toothpick, so they are really, really small. So I wanted everything sort of contained within the vehicle. I didn't want leads coming up through the diode base because I wanted to be able to move the vehicles around, as you would have seen from the Final Reveal movie. So this was the first case I tried, which didn't quite fit in the hull of the tank, and I was still sort of experimenting and managed to butcher the couple that I had, which made me need to order some different ones. So then I found these round, smaller ones, which I thought would fit in better, but whilst they sort of fitted in not perfect and I couldn't get the on off switch position where I needed it to be. And these are the round batteries that I was using, the CR2016s. You can get smaller and that might be interesting for some thoughts I've got with uh, Haladonian aircraft a little bit further down the track. I did have an old soldering iron which I attempted to use the first few times but I, it was really primitive and you couldn't vary the temperature and I found I was just burning everything, including myself. So I went out and bought this, which is just a cheapie. It's probably only about 40 bucks Aussie, but at least you can vary the temperature and it's got the stand and the sponge and everything. So for me, at my level of uh, experience, it's fine. So of the four tanks, I had lights to put into three because I'd glued that stupid blue thing into the first one. And silly me had glued down the upper hull so I couldn't get it out without completely damaging the tank. So I've got three to play with. It was an evolving um, style as we went along. So I won't, I'll just let you watch it because it's, uh, the first one has got a bit of video. The second one's mainly just stills. And the third was my best effort of saying, well, I think this is as good as it's going to get. You'll note horrendous soldering skills throughout the whole thing, so I've got a long way to go there. But we uh, we get there in the finish. The plan for the first one was just to make a case and have it sit in the lower hull, which you can see evolves over the next little while. This is a diagram for a simple LED setup. Uh, this is running off a 9 volt battery, so it's got a resistor showing in the diagram, which I don't have because I'm just using the 3 volt batteries and the LEDs can cope with that. I did test a LED out on a 9 volt battery and it blows it up. In comparison, here's my diagram, which is sort of a placement diagram where I thought the wires would go uh, and where I thought the actual connection points would be from the LEDs themselves. You'll see as things unfold that didn't come out quite as neatly as this looks. So realising that the battery container wasn't going to fit in properly, I decided I'd just cannibalise the parts and then try and rebuild a container within. So you'll see various versions of this where I've chopped down the battery case in the first one and then how that evolves over time.
this first effort was um, not well thought through because the, I left the leads there full length, which was about 20 centimetres. And when it came to getting the top back on, the upper hull connected, uh, I had them scrunched all over the place. And it was it was a bit of a bit of chaos, um, and I think subsequently might have broken a few connections because a couple of the rear lights don't work here. And one of the annoying things that happened was, and I never thought to do it, was at one stage when I had all three tanks wired and all lights working, I never actually took any footage of that. And this, in the construction phase, may be the only evidence that they ever actually were working before I got to the final reveal. Now, the second attempt was slightly more sophisticated. I still went for modification of the battery case, but I decided I'd mount it in the upper hull so I could keep the wires short to the cones, and that did work better in terms of sealing up the top unit without having millions of wires hanging around. But it still was a bit problematic fit-wise because that battery container was still marginally too big. Second piece of evidence that they actually worked in construction was just a little lead bulb that I was using to make sure I had my connection points with the battery and the on-off switch working well before I started connecting the actual micro LEDs themselves. And here you can see just part of the issue of modifying the battery container. Despite my best efforts, it was actually a little bit too deep and uh, couldn't quite close the upper hole with the uh, bottom hole, and that caused a few issues. So the solution to that was to clamp the crack out of it, which you can see here. I've gone a bit medieval with the number of clamps. But happily, I just noticed in the uh, recording of the audio that the, it shows all the rear lights and the um, turret light working. So um, not a completely lost uh, cause at this stage. So the third attempt is a little bit more sophisticated. You can see it, it's all basically the same um, design idea but just became a little bit more self-contained and didn't try to reuse any of the actual battery container parts themselves and build it all up as we went along. So you can see what's going on. I'll leave you in peace.
one of the real challenges with the lens themselves was when you connect them, you've got the positive and the negative side. And um, one should be far shorter than the other. And that's typical of all the lens that you'll get. One leg is longer than the other. And you know which side it goes on. These, if there was a difference in them, it was so hard to tell. So they were nearly identical in length which meant I spent a lot of time soldering, and, and they had a protective coating on them, so you couldn't just hold them to the battery and, and see which side was which. You literally had to solder them to something to burn off that protective coating to see if you had it on the right. So you sort of had a 50-50 chance each time, and I reckon my luck ran against the odds, and if I got it right 30% of the time first up, that would have been maximum. So there was a lot of mucking around getting them on and then finding they didn't work and having to take them off and, and swap them around. And virtually done now. So the last thing I wanted to do was just to hide those switches that are sticking out the back. And uh, I was sort of rummaging around what I had on the shelf and found these resin ammo containers, 135th scale. And I thought, well, they don't look too bad. So um, the last little bit is just set. And then I'll come back to say goodbye. And that's pretty much it. So I just wish I'd filmed a little bit more once they were all wired up and before they got painted, showing the lights coming on and off. But you've seen it in the final reveal anyway, so you're not really missing anything. And that is actually it. So, as always, guys, girls, thanks for watching. Uh, like if you liked, subscribe if you want to keep current with all the new releases. It's been a fun little series, the Heladonian Armour, and that's it from start to finish for the four Pershings. Uh, a couple of other things to come off the conveyor belt in the not too distant future, and then we might have a look at some Heladonian Air Force activity. So, as always, look forward to your comments, and uh, I will catch you on the next one. Take care, all. Bye.